Thank you very much. Sorry for, for letting you wait uh, due to some technical problems. Uh, hope next time they will be uh, everything will be smoother. So um, I'd like to uh, make introduction lecture to uh, integrable systems. Uh, and it will be somewhat dispersive for some time and then we'll be closer to the end dispersionless. So let me start by recalling uh, uh, about dynamical systems, uh, namely ODEs. So uh, if you talk about um, uh, a just vector field, uh, the moment, um, on a manifold M, then the corresponding system of equation x dot equal to v of x, in order to integrate it locally, you need n minus one integral, where n is dimension of a manifold. And well, a first integral. And first integral is something that is constant along the floor. So you, you solve the uh, equation uh, lead derivative uh, along this is equal to zero. Uh, so, <clears throat> So, um, and then um, the functions uh, which we consider it is, is integrals, of course, has to be assumed function independent almost everywhere, uh, because if that depends, there's no need uh, for, for so many. Uh, so in this case, trajectories are given by just by fixing uh, uh, value of, of every integral. And this fixing value, we decrease uh, every time dimension. So finally, fix n minus one integrals, we get uh, two dimension one, which is trajectory. So we don't get uh, parentization of this trajectory, but we will know traje trajectory uh, as an orbit. Now, if m is closed, for example, or, or we have proper action, then this is very too restrictive. So just imagine what you did here, and you uh, fix all the things. So uh, you get uh, one dimensional closed manifold. Therefore, all trajectories are periodic. So that's so called re resonance situation. So of course you don't, well, usually systems are more complicated. Therefore it means that actually this definition of integrability is not already very good. Uh, of, co of course we can use it locally and sometimes it's actually used, uh, but in principally there's no difficulty in, the, in to, to integrate uh, dynamical systems locally. Okay, when we go to Hamiltonian systems, um, so if you have a symplectic manifold W capital with omega symplectic form, then we can consider Hamiltonian system X dot is equal to XH, where XH is Hamiltonian system, which I recall is um, uh, symplectic inverse to differential H. Okay, then in order to do integrability, we need less integrals, namely if dimension of uh, manifold is two and we need half of them and first integrals, uh, provided they in involution because fixation of each integral will actually remove two dimensions. But one of the integral is, 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 exists automatically, that's energy. So Hamiltonian itself is all integral. That's trivial. So we need therefore existence for n minus one integrals. So we want the first is the integral. So they commute with Hamiltonian with respect to Poisson bracket. And second, that they commute uh, with each other. Okay, so here Poisson bracket is, um, well, can be uh, defined through Poisson structure pi. Uh, the omega is um, uh, skew symmetric uh, two covector. If you take inverse of it, it will be skew symmetric two vector. That's called Poisson uh, by vector, and we can compute the differential of functions that will give Poisson break. It. So again, we assume here uh, functional independence. Uh, namely uh, di1, di2, and so forth, up to din minus one, uh, also which dh maybe is, is not identically equal to zero. So in this case, generally the, the trajectories are not periodic, but still the motion is quasi-periodic. Okay, it happens on torus, so it's still pr pretty good controllable. Okay, note for further reference that we have this relation, so that h i, that's Poisson bracket for functions, is the same as a uh, lead derivative uh, of i along Hamiltonian field xj or minus opposite, a lead derivative of h along uh, uh, Hamiltonian field xi. So other words, this says that xi is symmetry of Hamiltonian if and only if i is the first integral. And in this simple form, we actually, that's just the theorem. Of course, for, for, for ODEs, it was normal. 
uh, version before. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, when we uh, start discussing PDs, there is different approaches to integrability. And I start with two dimensional situation, or some physicists say one plus one dimension, where they would like to specify time separately. So, one plus k means k spatial variables, one time variable. Okay, uh, that's not very important for us. So, the approaches are lux pair in differential operators. Uh, infinitely many higher symmetries, uh, infinitely many conservation laws, of course, independent all the time, uh, by Hamiltonian structures and uh, related recursion operators, a uh, bunch of exact solutions, so usually in this context, solid one solutions, uh, existence of background transformations, existence of wall quist esther brook uh, prolongation. Uh, so uh, for, for different equations, we might have all of them or some of them. Uh, and I will demonstrate many of those things now on example of KDV equation. Okay, so Kordovic decrease equation uh, is such an evolutionary equation. So it's a third order. And you see the nonlinearity comes in first order. Okay, so otherwise as other terms are linear. So the coefficients you choose are six, six here and minus one here. They vary from source to source. You can see one plus one and plus one. And you can change uh, one to the other by just simple rescaling. If you scale T and scale X independently, then you change the six and minus one to other non-zero numbers. Okay, I'll tell a bit later why I choose this. Uh, well, actually, the first, first reason is because that's classical, how it was written by Businesk, but um, but there are other reasons. Okay, so <clears throat> a lux pair for KDV. Uh, uh, a lux pair for uh, nonlinear PDs uh, is over determined linear system, depend sometimes depending on auxiliary spectral parameter lambda, uh, whose compatibility condition is the given PD. So for KDV, uh, the lux pair is the following. So we have over determined system on V. So presently also see U in this uh, situation, but you, uh, you have to treat it as background. If you would like to treat simultaneously V and U, you will get system of two PDs on two unknowns as determined system. But you fix U somehow, well, just, just as a background thing, and you concentrate on V. Then you get over determined right two equations on two pds and you have to compute compatibility conditions so how you do it well in this case everything is very easy you differentiate this equation by t this equation by x and you uh, equate mixed derivative of course when you differentiate uh, this equation by x so in particular uh, you will have here um uh, to differentiate twice by x, right? So you have here v triple x, and that's fine. And here you have vx, that's also fine. But when you shade this by t, then you have here vt. So you have to substitute this equation again to the, to, to the uh, well to the result. Um, and so uh, at the end, there will be something which contains u and its derivative, and also v and its derivative. But there will be no vt. Okay, because Vt is substituted and there will be no Vxx and V triple X will also not be there because you can express it from here and substitute. Okay, so since you have linearity with respect to V, therefore the only V coefficients which appear will be V and Vx. So you expect in principle two uh, differential expressions in U. But not very difficult to check that actually you have one. Okay, and this uh, differential ratio is precisely KD. Okay, that's that, that that's surprise because in principle you can't get actually two things. So if you just write something uh, abstractly and start doing this, and then you can get more equations. Okay, so um, geometrically you think about KDV as submanifold. So we will consider a jet space of mapping from R two to R one. Tx independent variable, u is dependent variable, and you take all possible uh, derivatives of u with respect to t and x uh, up to infinity, but you treat them as independent coordinates, so as therefore you get just space. And then KDV relation plus all its derivatives give you 
co-dimensional infinity submanifold on here. Okay, that's KDV submanifold equation. Now it is equipped with Cartan distribution, which is actually rank two distribution on this infinite dimensional model. So it is spanned by total derivative t and total derivative x. And how you get them? Well, basically, you take dt and you write such uh, sum, infinite sum. There's d by u sigma. Sigma is multi-index. Uh, and here you have a bit more, u sigma t. So you add also t derivative to, 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 towards this. But then you restrict to epsilon. So what does it mean to you restrict to epsilon? If you go back um, to, to KDV, you see ut is expressed. And if you start prolonging this equation, it means you can express UTT, UTX, and so forth. So all those variables can be eliminated. So basically, you can, you will be left with U, UX, UXX, and so forth. Only X derivatives will be allowed in, in, in this uh, expressions. Okay. So when we talk about lux pairs, then we get a different equation of manifold because it will be in jet space of mapping from R2 to R2. Uh, so we add V as independent variable, right? And then we have this equation, its prolongation, and we do very similar story. So this will be uh, also ranked to distribution, but with a bit extended um, total derivatives, right? So you also have to include a bit of V stuff. So those with U will, will be still there, but this will be a bit longer. Now we have submersion uh, from one manifold with distribution to the other manifold with distribution. And this uh, uh, submersion sends uh, this distribution to this distribution. This is called differential covering. Uh, well, inverse sometimes called integrable extension. And uh, well, even though the fiber is uh, actually um, uh, the fiber of this thing is uh, continuous, it's not discrete, it's still called covering, and there are reasons for this actually. So the fiber you actually can see it's not infinite dimensional basically because if you fix U, you think what is the freedom of V? That is the fiber, right? And so you actually see that, well, you have to specify initial conditions, which is V and Vx, and that's it, right? So everything else can be expressed, so it's two dimensional. Um, now, uh, uh, whenever we have such a covering, it's usually a sign of integrability, right? So, so that slug pair is uh, one of the primary signs of integrability. Another uh, sign is symmetry. So, and um, then symmetry of equation is um, a contact vector field such that its prolongation is tangent to equation. Okay, so uh, we want, well, we usually take a vector field. Oh, well, contact means that it just preserves the Cartan distribution equation. And these are always lifts from J0 from J1. Okay, and in the case when phi is lift from J0, from J1, that's called classical symmetry, actually. Right? Uh, it, if it's lift from J0, it's called even point, right? So, so then, then this generating function phi is affine in one jet. But if it's not linear one jet, it's called, called cont. But in principle, this phi may be of higher order. And then it's called higher symmetry. OK, so this notation, uh, so, so it's more convenient to introduce notations. Remember, there's no t derivative because of modular equation. So it's only u and x derivative. So we will denote u k number of x derivatives. So u0 is u, u1 is ux, u2 is ux, x, and so forth. And then highest symmetries of KTV are as follows. So this is, of course, point symmetry. So this is classical. Well, this is actually KTV itself. That's still trivial. But all higher, like this will be higher flows of KTV. So how can you treat them? So there are two ways you can imagine them. So one is the following. So you can um, uh, just generate a flow. So you can say that we write such evolutionary equation, u t0 equal to s0. Uh, and then uh, t0 is uh, trajectory along, tra uh, along this um, vector field. Well, of course, vector field is on, on uh, equation manifold itself, right? So you get um, once. Then you can introduce another time and have another vector field, and so forth. Well, so, and then all these flows do commute. 
OK, so we have infinitely many commuting flows. Note that uh, these uh, order of fire symmetries are, are odd, right? So the existing order 1, 3, 5, 7, and so forth, uh, one in every odd order. So another um, definition of symmetry is the following. So, well, I just give it in the case when E equations given by Ram equation is in KDV case. Uh, then we do the following. So we compute linearization of the rate. Okay. So, it, it, and this is a well defined on solution of equation. Uh, as usual, linearization is, is deviation from zero. So, if you would like to substitute to f function u and it is zero, then we can linearize. So, what we do here, so we write this, this operator d sigma, it's total derivative, iterated because sigma now is multi index. And this partial derivative actually should be here u sigma, not sigma. So partial derivative by jet variable u sigma of expression f. So here you will see jet of u. And that, of course, you take from, um, from the background solution. OK, so that's linearization operator to f. And then this the equation for symmetry, so which will form Lie algebra sim e, is the following. So you take this linearization operator, apply to well, this generating function, which will be function, well, actually on, on j infinity, uh, and you restrict the equation it has to be zero. Okay, so it has to be a zero mode equation. Equivalently, we can write it in the following form. But now this bracket is not Poisson, but it's higher uh, order bracket. It's called Jacobi bracket. So, so it's actually extension of Poisson to two jets. Uh, very similar formula. So. Um, uh, so the formula for uh, bracket, Jacobi bracket between f and phi is the following. So it's linearization f applied to phi minus linearization phi applied to f. Okay, that's very similar was Poisson bracket. Okay, so now um, uh, this also in particular means the following. So f uh, if it's symmetry. So the generating function for symmetry, uh, so sorry, phi is, is, is symmetry for f, it will be compatible with the equation. So if you put phi equal to zero and we take original equation f equal to zero, this will be two compatible equations. So we can solve it with any um, admissible Cauchy data. The meaning of this will be the following. This will be precisely stationary point of those flows corresponding to, to phi. Okay, so we have vectors, or, or in other words, symmetric solutions. Okay, conservation laws. Uh, so by Newton theorem, so every symmetry gives a conservation law. So conservation law is d minus one form. So if d is dimension, so presently is two, but later we will increase. Uh, so it's uh, d minus one horizontal form, which means if you substitute anything vertical from from jet, you get zero. Okay, so it's exp just expressed in, in the differentials of x, but coefficients may be arbitrary functions on jet, such that if you take horizontal di differential, okay, you take just differential and then you reduce mod all Cartan forms, and you also reduce mod equation, then you get zero. So, of course, when you have d equal to one, so here you have zero, so it's just function, that's definition of first integral, which we discussed in. Um, uh, as the first slide. When we talk about d equal to 2, uh, or 1 plus 1 situation, then uh, the, um, uh, this will be one form, right? And its closeness it will be relation of this kind. ht plus f, f is equal to 0. Formally, uh, of course, I have to also include here an argument of those functions. Um, I have to include also independent variables, t and x. But in, in those translational variant equations like KDV, um, usually those considered without TNX. Okay, at the end, I'll show you some maple slides, and then you see that actually TNX nature appears there as well. Okay, so omega here is one form written like this, and of course, if you differentiate, you get this relation. So actually, H is called conserved density, F is called flux. And if you know densities and you know everything, you can integrate and find flux. Okay, but 
often you would like to see local conservation works. So even if you know density, by doing integration, you may get non-local variables. Okay, because you, you don't want any kind of integral science. You would like really local expressions, which are uh, functions in um, jet coordinates. Okay, so for KDV, applying Knotter, we get infinitely many conservation laws, and I list the first three. Okay, so this one, if you expand, you will see precisely KDV. Okay, this one, if you expand, you see precisely KDV. And then this one, if you expand, you will see consequence of KDV. So you will have, well, you definitely see now it's higher order, fourth order. So it's, it's, it holds true due to KDV and its derivative. And um, usually people write um, uh, conserved quantities as integral of H dx equal to zero. Why? Because, uh, because if you differentiate by T, uh, H dx, then you will get up to sign fx dx. And if f decreases to, at infinity, that's the integral from minus infinity to infinity is equal to zero, right? By a fundamental zero of complex. So therefore, if you concentrate on H, which is u, u square, u q plus one half u x square, then we have these conserved quantities. And they are known as mass, momentum, and energy. Okay, due to the algebra structures, that's actually cause it. Now, well, there's infinitely many, but they don't write them down. There's a way to write them down that's called recursion operator, and recursion operator is obtained from bigamiltonian structure. So there's, in fact, for KDV, many Hamiltonian structures, it's actually infinitely many. Two of them are a bit better than the others because two are local. So what is um, what is uh, Hamiltonian structure in this interdimensional context? It's relation of the form ut equal to Euler-Lagrange operator and then um, um, uh, composed with, 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 with operator chain. Uh, and that's very much resembled to what I wrote on the first slides, omega minus one dh. Okay, but now we take variational derivatives. So, so um, uh, Euler Lagrange operator. This is delta u, right? It's du minus total derivative um, by x applied to uh, partial derivative by ux plus twice total derivative applied pa to partial derivative by ux x and so forth. So that's the standard formula for this one. And I one is called density. Well, or, or Hamiltonian, and here it is. So that's actually the integral, and that's what stay inside what we integrate called density, as before. And there's these two choices, right? So, and then uh, operators G are here. So you see in the first case, G is simple, density is a bit more complicated, and the choice is opposite. And you can also note this u square and uq plus one half ux square, right? That's conservation, this, this is um, conserved density from the previous slide. Okay, so if you would like to concentrate now on these, we see that actually uh, it will be possible to pr produ produce one Hamiltonian structure from the other if you use a recursion operator. This is a recursion operator, and if you just formally compose these two operators, what is dx minus one? Well, certain integration with respect to x, of course, it's very easy to compose with dx cubed, you get this, also with respect to this, but here it still comes as non-local operator. And that may be a problem because it may produce non-local expression. Now, the story is symmetries, is actually that it doesn't. And you start with this zero, which is just this classical symmetry, just trans translation in uh, symmetry, right? Translation by... Uh, uh, by T, right? And then uh, you uh, produce uh, KDV itself and then produce fifth order, seventh order, and so forth, right? By this. And even though you have this one, we will see at the end when I go to Maple that actually there will be no, um, there will be no non-local variables introduced. 
Okay, and this recursion allows to, to generate uh, the, the, the entire hierarchy of higher symmetries and also recursion allows to generate uh, uh, conservation laws. Okay, so, so soliton. Well, I don't talk about inverse scattering method, but base be, be, uh, behind inverse scattering method is precise lux pair. The story is that you look to this and that's a linear equation with respect to V and especially concentrate, of course, this is just evolution in time, but you concentrate on this one, which is from V. So the second of the linear and you try, to, well, and, and you know the solution of true will depends on two functions and you can obtain the solution through boundary value problem. You just put this boundary to infinity. So, uh, and you induce uh, this, um, uh, knowledge from there. That's called inverse scattering method. So, um, and in particular, that's one way to get special localized solution, uh, which retains their size and shape at all time. And even with the special solution interact, they can pass through each other without changing size and shape. Only at the moment of interactions, we'll see it later. Okay. So these are, um, so all these um, special, uh, so, so this special solution, soliton solutions, they involve stationary points of higher symmetries. So we saw some particular higher symmetries like of order one, of order three, of order five, and so forth. But of course, we can also take linear combinations that is zero to one. And so you actually see filtration. So up to order one, up to order three, up to order five, and so forth. That's how you have to, so you, you, you take, you, you, you truncate and you take all possible linear combinations. And then you look to stationary points of those and you get uh, so finite zone equations, so special uh, uh, algebraic solutions. Okay, and, and that's pretty big class and very interesting. Uh, and uh, then there's a singular log consisting of polyton. Okay. So now, in fact, the first soliton is very easy to obtain because it's just classical symmetry reduction. So you impose by this equation so this combination of two um, of, of two uh, simple uh, scaling symmetries. No, uh, so um, translation symmetries. So uh, then you impose actually when you impose this condition, you say that actually it is equation of the form traveling wave. So it depends only on one argument argument of this kind. Okay, so, so this tells you that it has to depend on one argument, an argument on this kind. And then you substitute this into, uh, put here arbitrary function f, substitute into uh, KDV equation, and you find that it's actually cos h uh, in degree minus two. Time something, that's, that's not arbitrary constant here, because remember, equation is nonlinear. Okay, so that's easy, because uh, going further, it's a bit more complicated, but then solitons can be given by implicit formula. So it's uh, this minus two second x derivative, a logative deriv uh, determinant of some n times n metric. So here is a metric. So some combination of exponents, some other people write it's a combination of cos a hyperbolic cosinuses. Okay, and actually, uh, when we uh, consider the asymptotics to plus infinity or minus infinity, we see this uh, as actual linear superposition of this cos h. Because they all have different velocity and so you actually, they are de decompose them into, into the sum. Uh, this constant c somehow transforms to this constant q. And if you go to plus infinity to, to one constant q, if you go to minus infinity, it will be shift. So they will be different at different infinities. Okay, now let us step to 3D. So, and in 3D, I'd like again to do phenomenological story and not discuss this general story, theory because actually there's no general theory. Uh, there's uh, a lot of observations, a lot of methods, right? But there's not that many theorems like for every integrable equation, something. Okay, but we will try to improve the situation later and we'll discuss uh, dispersionless systems. Okay, so first dispersion. So this is Kadam Sutvashvili equations. I, I will not discuss how they appear from applications, this appear nature of application, but you can just think, okay, that's generalization of KDV. Why? Because say u doesn't depend on y. So you just drop this 
And then you do some, as people, sometimes people do integration. So you see this in derivative by x equal to zero, the four parenthetical expression is equal to zero. Well, of course, it's not completely true. You have to write that this equation function doesn't depend on x, but then you can eliminate this function by, by some um, simple considerations. Okay, so one way people write this equation is in evolutionary form to see something really similar to KDV, right? So you would like to eliminate this x derivative. So what you would like to do, you would like to move this to right hand side and apply integration by x. So then you see non-local expression, right? dx minus y. Okay, and uh, you can actually introduce Hamiltonian formulas. And for this form, because you have d minus one, it will be non-local, there will be some number of d minus ones, but you can still uh, operate with those. And in this way, you can get infinitely many higher symmetries and conservation laws. All of them non-local. Um, maybe some number of conservation laws will be like three will be local, but majority will be non-local. Okay, so uh, important thing and most important and uh, the different flux pair, which, which is based on the spectrum. So last pair for KDV is the following. So um, look that now actually we have more derivative of V when we write it. So, so we, we write VT equal and VY equal. It's a bit different form that, that in chi, in, for, for, for KDV, but there's uh, X derivative standing here. Okay, so up to third one which is of course not surprising if you uh, know what you want to, to get. There's also some spectral parameter sitting in here, right? So whenever we get something it has to be true for any value of lambda. Okay, so what do we do? We compute compatibility again. So of course it's already written uh, in, in good shape. So you differentiate this by Y, you differentiate this by T and you subtract. However, you have to do a bit more work because if you differentiate this by Y here, you will see V X X X Y. And this shall not be like this. So you express it through here. You differentiate triple this by x and substitute, right? And here you will have, you will see vx xt. Okay, so how you do? You differentiate this twice by x and you substitute. So after all, there shall be no t of y derivative. Okay, only x derivative shall, shall remain. And so you see that you actually don't have a lot of things. And so you take uh, some combination, and again, it will be only. Well, now you now we have to think how many. Turns out actually two. Know that what is the ground here? So V, of course, V is the variable we do. Um, uh, we do well, that, that's, that's over the system for V. But there are some other letters here, U and even some W. So U and W also functions of X, uh, Y, and T. Okay, lambda is just constant. So what you get by this, you get two equations of uh, well, third and first order on U and W. Okay, one is this one, and the other is this one, and that's actually local form of KP, right? Because here you don't use any uh, inverse differentiation, any integral, right? So and that's the way how you rewrite uh, KP, not like well, you would like to do some kind of uh, evolutionary form, but you don't in, in, invoke any uh, dx minus one of y, right? Of course, if you just look to this equation, that's precisely what it says, that w is dx minus one of uy, right? And then you put it in here, right? And you get precisely what's written above. But in this form, it's actually become local and Hamiltonian operator now can be local. For this form, Hamiltonian can be local. Nevertheless, there's no uh, local higher symmetries, no infinitely many local conservation laws. So these things do not exist in 3D. So uh, this analog in 3D becomes much more complicated. So if you would like to produce this, so, so, so you have to introduce new variable like here, right? So, so you see you have dx minus one of u of u y y. So how to do? You have to introduce this variable w through this equation and you resolve in the locality. And then when you compute higher symmetry, you introduce one more variable. Next higher symmetry, one more variable. And with every new higher symmetry, you introduce more and more variables. So basically you have not differential operator, 
patient will often have symmetry, but still differential because you have more and more d minus one x. Okay, and so uh, and this tail, well, is actually so 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 you 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 can't you can't stop it. <clears throat> okay, so um, um now. Now let me start moving towards dispersionless uh, uh, equations. And so I will show now a trick which is a horror of, uh, made in 1991. So let's do the following um, substitution, which is standard uh, approach to fast oscillation, right? So we take, write V is equal to exponent psi or epsilon, and then we let epsilon tend to zero. Okay, simultaneously we do scaling reduction for, for, for all um, independent variables, right? So we also divide them by epsilon, which for corresponding basis vectors will be just scaling by epsilon, okay? So we take this and this, we substitute this into our equation. Okay, of course, equation involves derivatives, so, so you know that the epsilon appear at many places. Okay? And then, well, you, you cancel by, top uh, epsilon term. Again, this, this can be done uh, by hand, but can be also done in, in, in any symbolic system like maple. So we, we will see later how it goes. Uh, so you, of course, do some consolidation by epsilon, and then you get terms without epsilon plus some positive power of epsilon times something else. And then you let epsilon goes to zero. And in this term, you get from the previous log pair such a log pair. So it becomes first order, but it becomes nonlinear. Okay, so let me go back for a moment. Look to this log pair. So this is a linear system in V, okay, of higher order, right? So in particular, see here triple derivative. After this transformation, which we see here, the system becomes nonlinear, but of first order, right? And here, instead of psi x, 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 oh, 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 you have psi x cube, right? So in a sense, derivative go into power, well, something which happens in Fourier transform. Okay, so now what do we, uh, so, so we, we of course transformed and, but but it's, what did we get? So we get to get over a domain system, but now for a different function psi. So function u and w are precisely the same as we saw in previous formula. Okay, so now we have first order um, uh, this is over the domain system of PDs, and we do compatibility system. Okay, so again, you can do T and Y derivative, mix, and so forth. Let me just mention that there's another way to compute compatibility. Uh, you can compute this Jacobi bracket, which I mentioned before, right? It has to be zero, but in the case of symmetry, it has to be zero just mod equation. Here, it has to be zero mod both these things which are written here. That's compatibility of these two expressions. Okay, so if you write compatibility, we again get two equations on u and w, so it's the determined system. And well, second equation is the same, but first equation has changed because it's just first order. Okay. Let's eliminate w. Okay. So when you eliminate w, it's very easy. You have w y equal to something, w equal to something, you eliminate it, and well, here is this. So you get first order nonlinear equation, and that's Dispersional limit of absolute dash called KP. In fact, let's see what, what's going on. So this equation we can get directly from KP. Just observe what happens in here. So all der derivations have to be multiplied by epsilon. So we'll go back to this equation, and then here you see. So you, here, you see here two derivative by T and X, therefore it's multiplied by epsilon. You see y y derivative multiplied by epsilon. If you take this term, you see one derivative here and one derivative here multiplied by epsilon square, right? So, so all this second to the term are multiplied by epsilon square. But you see here, u fourth derivative by x is going to be multiplied by epsilon power four. So when epsilon goes to zero, of course, the last term disappear because it uh, goes to zero faster than the others. And so you just drop this term, right? And that's what you get is called DKP. So this term actually highest derivative. So, so sometimes it's called dispersion. And that's why dropping it out it's called dispersionless limit. Okay, so now I also note that, that something important happens. I, I will not talk very much about it today, but I will talk about it uh, uh, in the next lecture. So if you look, go back and look to this um, 
to this equation. So what is symbol of this equation? Symbol is the information contained in highest derivatives. And highest derivative here is u x x x x, right? So if we do uh, transform, uh, Fourier transform for this, and uh, then, then we get uh, force powers of momentum corresponding to x. So it's px power force. And so, so, so if we would like to write this equation, it will be just hyperplane. So it will be degenerate characteristic variety. This distortion relation is degenerate. So if you go to here, then actually all, well, that's second order, that's second order. And here, well, because they do differentiation, so there'll be two terms, one of first order and one of second order. So you have three second order terms. And actually, that's quite interesting symbol in here. Okay, it will be non degenerate. And we will talk more about this. This, this uh, gives um, relation to quadrics, to conformal structures, and this uh, brings a lot of geometry into the picture. So, so take the philosophy, which I would like to just make an observation at this point, then the dispersive equations, they have very little information in, in their symbol. Uh, so, so there's little geometry you can observe. There's Hamiltonian formulas, but you have to work on infinite dimensional prolongation. Infinite dimension just. So here you don't need actually. You can leave on the equations like in, in, in second jets, and you can observe a lot of geometry. And that's what we will do at some point. Okay. So, uh, um, so I, I didn't say it, but I wrote it somewhere. Uh, so I call this. No, I call. This yes, uh, the Harov pair, right? So some people call everything, all these co coverings which give us compatibility or original PD, they call coverings or Lux pairs, but Lux pair will be busy. So, so we will call, I will be calling this kind of um, covering the Harov pair. So, how is it possible to go from the Harov pair to Lux pair? Okay, so. Uh, just a moment. Um, may I ask you uh, some questions? Yes. yes so, please. so again, like this G1, so how you, like in the previous slide, so this G1, G2, you obtain, like, you plug this Zahar of substitution and take epsilon equal to zero, and that is not, what not, you... not at once. First, I decompose everything cancel by the lowest degree of exile, right? Because it will be everywhere. Ah, cancel the lowest. Ah, okay. Right, otherwise you can just get zero equal to zero. Yes, okay. Mm. Yes, so I take lowest terms in terms of powers of epsilon. Mm. Exponent, of course, will be everywhere. Exponent I can cancel, right. And so like you replace the cadence of Petyashvili by dispersion cadence of it, and somehow yes. you want to go back, like, uh, that's a very complicated question, actually. In this yes. case, well, this so-called perturbative approach. So you try to um, recover terms of higher order so that actually you can also extend Lux pair. And you would like certain commutativity. And for KP, it works, and you stop. In many cases, actually, you have to go to infinity and you produce infinitely many terms. You can, like, give terms of order four, then terms of order six, and so forth. So every uh, order you introduce new and new corrections. Uh, and it still works. But for some, it doesn't work. So in principle, there may be more integrable dispersionless equation than dispersive. Right. So, so, so that's kind of, but, but there's certain perturbative approach. And it's, and nobody guarantee you get something like local physics. Thank you. Okay, so um, let me first say um, what is a dispersionless log pair. That's pretty good uh, geometric object. So if we consider equation uh, on a manifold M and U its solution, then uh, I'd, I'd like to avoid a bit uh, extensive use of jet language and this formal theory. So what I do, I do the following. So I denote by mu my base manifold, where independent variables live, plus function. So 
bit strange story, right? So, so I, I, it's just a solution, right? So what is solution? Function and that M is domain of definition, of course, for the solution. But I would like to think about it as actually a section of gen bond, because U is a map. Well, it's previously like uh, R3 of uh, TXY uh, to, to R1 of U. Right. And, and I can infinitely prolong it. And so it gives me like mapping from base to, 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 to jet space. And so, of course, it's as a solution, it, it actually lives in this equation some meaning. But there are some algebraic structures which will be useful and they which in this sense. Okay, but for now, I just think about MU is just previous manifold plus function. A dispersion of Lux pair is a rank to distribution on some projective line bundle over MU. Okay, so in our case, MU is three dimensional, MU hat will be four dimensional. And so far, it's just defined for any function, no restriction. Uh, maybe I wrote it a bit more complicated, actually. I meant holonomic uh, section, so I actually have to write a bit something a bit simpler here. Start that the Frobenius integrability condition follows from, or in good cases, actually equivalent to the condition that U is solution to, 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 epsilon, to, to E. Okay, so for DKP, uh, this uh, has a following formula. If you denote the fiber coordinates, so remember this one dimensional bundle, so, so fiber is projective line. So if lambda is the projective coordinates uh, in physics it called stepsal parameter, then uh, this rank to distribution is given by two vector fields. So it's generated by two vector fields. Okay, so you have coordinates here, T, X, Y, and you have coordinates here, T, X, Y, and lambda, right? So in particular, I can say, okay, so I can normalize it. This will be just dt and something times dx, something times time the lambda, and here will be dy and something times dx, something times the lambda. And that's the coefficients which are there. So <clears throat> how we actually get uh, this DLP from DZP, so lux pair from the far off pair? Uh, so it's, it's pretty much geometric. Let's consider cotangent bundle over mu. Okay, I would like to have coordinate on MU. I have coordinate TXY, that's just base coordinate, and this corresponding moment of, uh, I denote them psi T, psi X, psi Y. And of course, uh, cotangent uh, space, cotangent um, bundles, total space of it has canonical symplectic form, which is written here. Okay, now uh, let's go one slide back. So look to, uh, no, two slides back. So look to this one. Uh, sorry, no, no, this one. I, I'd like to talk about this one. Uh, There's a hard part, right? So that's relation between those momenta, right? So between psi x, psi t, and psi y. Of course, there are some u here and w, but you think they are fixed function. Okay, that's so background solution. For now, they are fixed. Okay, uh, not specified, but I don't pay attention. Okay, so what I have with those two relations, I have here a submanifold. So this is six dimensional. Submanifold is uh, um, given by two equations. So I get a co-dimension to submanifold n, right? So what kind of restriction of two form can I have on co-dimensional manifold? Generically non-degenerate. Yes, that's right. So um, it is, um, has always rank four or two, cannot have rank less than two omega restricted to n, but you expect generically rank, uh, rank four, which means non-degenerate restriction. And that's true. Now, so you can ask when rank drops, when rank drops to, well, to two, therefore, that's such uh, submanifolds n are called co-isotronic. So the statement is a computation is that this happens if and only if u satisfies DKP. Okay, so what do we have then? Uh, then we have four dimensional manifold and rank to four on it. And rank to forms therefore has to have kernel, which has to be two dimensional. Okay, and then the, what is this thing? That's actually at every point, the two dimensional plane tangent bundle. 
that's precisely rank two distribution. So that's precisely the above by two head. Uh, and um, here, well, let me just go back for a moment. So uh, psi t and psi y play no role because when we do uh, restrict submanifold, they just make the substitution, right? So coordinates on n will be t x y and psi x. And I will denote psi x by lambda. And that's where we'll get this. So lambda will be spectral parameter. Okay, so um, uh, now there is, um, so just a moment, so I'll go, go back. So uh, I can also formulate this DLP as follows. So, so I can of course take these two vector fields and say I would like to, to well, to, to check Frobenius condition. Uh, when does it hold? So in principle, you see that in this case, Frobenius condition is equivalent just to commutation of what's written here, right? Because I normalize coefficients of dt and dy to be one, right? So if you do commutations, you get something times dx and something times d lambda. So in principle, you expect two conditions, but it actually will be only one, and that's precisely the one we want, dkt. Okay, now I'd like to get a geometric interpretation of DLP. Well, first of all, if you ask how to go back from, uh, how to get the heart of pair from DLP, and again, the answer will be in general not possible. So uh, like um, in the DKP case, we can do it, but for other equations, it's just not possible. Uh, so it's much, it's much more restricted. It's called pseudo potential not need to exist, or maybe, in a sense, just non-local. If we allow non-local things, then yes, it is possible. Now, uh, we can get some other linear coverage as follows. So let me uh, write the following equation. So I take vector fields with attention to this slug distribution, and I differentiate the following expression, lambda minus lambda of x. Well, so yes, maybe you excuse me for writing it like this, but uh, whenever I first differentiate, then afterwards I substitute lambda equal to lambda x. So that, that's why I'm doing. I would like to, to say that a vector field has to be uh, tangent to the surface lambda equal to lambda of x. So definitely you just see at the surface, remember that m hat is bundle over m. So you have three dimensional surface in there, begin by this equation. So there's only two generators here, therefore you'll get two equations. So here they are, okay? So again, it's pair of equations. Now I think lambda not is constant, but lambda is function of txy. And I get for it, uh, uh, I get for it quasi-linear over the German system. Compatibility is indeed equivalent to DKP. Okay, now, um, all of these can be now united into the twistorial picture. Okay, we already discussed this side, right? So this is our base manifold, or better to say solution, right? Because it's manifold equipped with this function. And this is it's what's called correspondent space. Okay, why this is P1 is actually a priori not clear. And it actually in some other cases, it is not even P1. Yes, it's one dimensional, but it may be more complicated curve. In the cases I'm going to consider next lecture, of course, it will be always P1, and I will explain why. Why then? Now, what do we have here? So here we have distribution actually, right? Which is Frobenius integrable if you is a solution. So then we can take leaf space, right? So then we can take the space of integrals of the corresponding foliation, and it's well, I just write quotient by by that. Then we get to something two-dimensional. In general, it's determined only locally. This thing is called twister space, okay? Just subtracting dimension, you see twister space is two-dimensional here. Well, sometimes people call it mini twister space because there's this bigger twister space, but mini is certain reduction. Okay, so what are those solutions which are here, right? They actually three-dimensional manifolds in here, right? And then the quotient, by per head, we will get curves in here, right? Because this distribution is 
tangent to them, right? So, so it's actually quotient goes very well. So this will be curves in here. Now, if we consider uh, solutions to these equations, then we get function of this space. Okay, so all of this can be just convenient formulated in, in terms of, uh, well, geometry and twister space. Okay, so further science of integrability. So when we go to dispersionless context, then instead of high local symmetries, uh, we will get integrable hierarchies, which are also some filtered subspaces. Uh, but now it's not the algebra structure, but it's rather compatible systems of increasing and increasing size. In the case of, well, the right potential in a moment, I will explain why. Uh, it is system of this kind. So, so here, um, I, K are number of differentiations by T and by X. No, sorry, it's actually, um, uh, No, sorry. So uh, that's second derivative, right? And it's derivation by i's variable and k's variables. So u formally depends on infinitely many variables, right? And u11 one one differentiation by x1, x1. Of course, we can always truncate this, and we can always truncate this, and then we'll get function with finitely many variables, and then we get huge compatible system. Now I change a bit numeration. First come here x, then comes y, then comes t, then comes all other variables. Okay, so this thing is also lux integrable, but now it's actually lux representation. So it's actually more vector fields. So um, so it's not rank two anymore, but it's some bigger distribution. But there's the same condition. So if you truncate somewhere here. And you take the corresponding truncation place here, then Frobenius condition will be equivalent to precisely this integrable hierarchy. So initial equations are as follows: so these three initial conditions, and you can recognize in the first equation something similar to DKP. In DKP case, the first and third cases, uh, the first and third uh, terms are the same. Uh, maybe coefficients are different, but this one was u u x everything derivative by x. And these are related through um, potentiation, right? That's why I call potential KP. So basically you take total, uh, you take derivative of x of the, the entire expression, right? And then you introduce, you change ux to new variable, let's call it u, and then you go back. To change constant, you use scaling of uh, base variables. Okay. So now if you go in the higher dimensions, there's still uh, possible to, to investigate integrability in the same way. And so, well, for example, for D equal to four, again, DLP is a rank two distribution of a projective line bundle. Or again, so, so let's say line bundle because projective maybe is restrictive. Whose Frobenius con integrability condition is implies or equivalent to equation uh, on U. Okay, so twister picture is more or less the same story but dimension grows by one. So here's four, here's five, here's three. Okay, and this story is the same. Okay, so uh, here is an example. So that's second Lebanski equation. It parameterizes certain family of self-dual solution to Einstein equations. To, 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 to the Einstein equation, uh, well, in signature two. two. Uh, and uh, the metric will be shown uh, later. Uh, now, it's this, so that's integrable. Its dispersionless lux pair is rank two distribution generated by these two vector fields. Right. So here we see that there is second derivative of u entering. Whenever you do commutation, you definitely guess you'll get third derivative. So that's the case when you don't get your equation back. 
but you get its differential consequence. So it's actually here it's not equivalent, but but you can do some change of variables and actually get the equation back. Okay, so lambda is spectral parameter here, and but there's there's quite a big difference with what we had in the case of DKP. So so you see here that this well that's true that this is vector field here on on this uh, space. However, they don't have a uh, partial derivative with respect to this uh, fiber variable. There is no uh, d by d lambda term, right? So it's d by dx, d by dy, but no d by d lambda. And that's big difference with dkp. Okay, so the corresponding geometry are quite different. Okay, again, there's covering, so, so like PD system, first order, quasilinear, compatibility of features equivalent to, well, not quite equivalent, but follows from from the Plevansky equation. Okay, so I think I actually, well, that's some references, but it's just impossible to give uh, a reference, but like uh, the trick of the horror which I showed uh, is uh, uh, from the conference proceedings of 1994. Okay, but that's subject more or less in the book. So um, let me um, maybe then stop here and let me show you uh, things how things are done in Maple. So I stop this share. And then go to Maple. Okay. Uh, so, so I start with KDV. So in order to produce recursion operator, I need to, to, to define operator. And that's actually part which is done from tutorial. So actually in Anderson wrote uh, lessons and tutorials. Um, and uh, this operator is more or less copied from there. So that's based on uh, in, in, uh, internal command homotopy. And homotopy, if you remember, for drum operator is just method of integrating. A long pass. Okay, so here I do set up x is independent variable, u is dependent variable. Uh, well, that's just space, that's just name for the just space, and uh, I appreciate I will not go above fifth derivative. If I do, actually, it will not complain. Okay, so let me just initiate, I didn't run this. Okay, so um, that's right hand side of KDV. Right, so uh, the notations are the same. So u3 means third derivative by x. That will be recursion operator, which I show there. And you see here this d minus one. That's inverse total derivative. That's d minus one. That's total derivative as usual derivative. Okay. So q well, q q is just uh, that, that that's mapping. Okay. So now let's start. We start with u1. Right, it's just classical symmetry, and then we generate the rest by applying recursion operator. It goes very fast. It doesn't make a big trouble to produce as many as we want, right? And you see first order, third order, fifth order, seventh order, ninth order, eleventh order. Yes, actually already on eleventh jet, so Maple doesn't complain. So basically, in principle, I have to announce I actually have intention to go to eleventh space, but if I did it without warning, so it's, it's still okay with this. Um, one particular uh, remark. Uh, so, so note that well, that's my KDV equation. Ut equal to six u u x minus u x x x, right? And this third coefficient six minus one. So uh, let me explain why. I can choose plus one and plus one, having Ut equal to u u x plus u x x x x. But then around here you will see a lot of rational expressions. So numbers will not be integers. Okay, so it's possible to, sh to show that for this choice, you'll get integer numbers. And also note that coefficient here is always plus minus one for top term. Okay, now uh, let's check in that all of the symmetries commute. Um, yeah, maybe I should, yeah, it actually goes sufficiently fast. Okay, so um, now uh, I would like to get some conservation laws. So here they are. Uh, so that's our first conservation law that we, we saw. Uh, that's H and F. That's H and F for the second one, and for this fourth one. And you see, I use this inverse uh, operation. 
Okay, I can apply it not only to Q1, Q1 is just KDV itself, but I can apply it to higher. Um, yeah, uh, interesting is the following. So it's actually these first two, sorry, is mass and momentum, but this one is not. So you see I, what I'm doing here, I take Q1, Q1 times U0, Q1 times U0 square, and, and I can continue. Every time it will be local expression, but you know that something happened here. X, independent variable, enters into, um, into flux. Okay, so, so that's also something interesting. So like I, I previously wrote H and F depend only on jet variables, no independent variables. Okay, so here is the, the, the short conservation law mentions the energy, right? So, so it's obtained from Q2, right? And we can play for those, can, can get a lot of those. Okay, I will not play this. So now um, that's a chicken um, lux pair for, for KDV. So now I introduce one more dependent variable V. Um, I can rem uh, let J to be the same name for manifold, I, but I change it, but basically it doesn't matter. So my lux pair is this over German system. Okay, and in LP1, I do prolongation because I need to substitute very many things, right? So, so I compute here VXXX and express through the rest. So I first evaluate then differentiate and substitute and so forth. And here's computation of mixed derivative. And when we do, oh yes, because I didn't announce this one. Okay, and then do, do this. So in principle, we can expect uh, linear terms V and VX, but we, Vx has zero coefficient. And what we see here, this has to be equal to zero, that's KDV. Okay. So here are some examples of, of uh, this formula for soliton solutions. Okay, first of all, well, I obtain them through this matrix. And well, actually here I can do for any size. So this I encode as the previous formula. And that's U. Well, of course it depends on X and T, but also depends on N because it's number. Um, Going to use. Okay, so let me just check that one to three uh, give me uh, solutions to a uh, KDV equation. Uh, why does it compute long? Because actually U3 has pretty long expression. So, uh, no, it's actually, let me stop it. Um, uh, I think I didn't announce this one. Go somewhat long. So get zero 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 sufficient to fast. Not good. Um, so maybe let let me just stop it. Uh, so it actually was okay in my previous ex, um, previous game. Okay, so. Let me just go on. Oh no, here's fine. Yeah. So computation interrupted, yes. I don't know. Uh, so this is this. And then actually that's relation to the first formula I play, right? So that's the same simplification. So once written the exponents, the other written cos h, one has to be a bit careful because they they in denominators, but it's still uh, this. Now let me show you animation. Actually, I just now learned how, I previously knew how to do it in, in, in Mathematica, but, but now I, I learned how to do it actually in Maple. Um, so, um, that's animation, I'm rough. That's two soliton, some interaction, and then the shape and size is preserved, right? And that's two soliton, for the case of three solitons, this will be the same story. Well, I, I have to make the collision at maybe at, at, at different points, but, but they, they need around zero picture. Okay, so 
very similar things for DKP. So, so here I, uh, I, I, I will, will save this maple file if somebody would like to walk through it. Uh, so uh, that's um, uh, KP, right? And then I check lux pair for it. And uh, maybe I'll just go through it with, 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 without uh, stopping. So this can, can all be done. Uh, I also do here this, the heart of trick, the substitution, right? For V. Uh, not for you, and then for all uh, those different variables. So, and and you will see that produce correct lux pair. So, so I concentrate on those terms which don't con contain epsilon. That these terms minus four vx cube, and there are the terms like here, 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 right? And so then I get DOP, if it's vision lux, lux pair first order, and I I, I check. Again, that it's lux pair and so forth. Now, this trick is symplectic for which I explain. Also, checking that this thing is, um, well, that's for four form, right? And I check uh, that it has rank four and uh, general, and rank two is precisely equivalent to uh, DKP. And uh, yes, and then I find the kernel. And I think uh, that's it. So, so all of computations can be very effectively done. And symbolic packages in it. Okay, so I will stop here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. So maybe we can have like 10 minutes of uh, formal question time and then um, after that we can have more informal. Can you remind me, like in the by Hamiltonian formulation, um, how do you, how do you how do you find J one and J two? Oh no no, finding Hamiltonian structure is complicated. You have to solve the business. It's, you have to define Poisson bracket so, so that the Jacobi identity satisfies. So, so skew symmetry is not difficult to attain. It's kind of skew adjoint is for course later. But uh, the Jacobi identity is usually a strong constraint. So that's, that's quite there's normal. No, no, no. no. For, 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 for many equations, there's no Hamiltonian structure. We're not talking about by Hamiltonian. Yes. This, uh, like, lux pair, so it's sort of ad hoc. So, I mean, you, you cannot guarantee uniqueness, like, they are not unique, right? Or they are if they exist let's say let me try to give different answers for dispersive and for dispersion so, so of course dispersive theory like solitonic theory appeared before and then well they will keep people will studying this and then for some time they, they also found out that there are so-called fake lex pair or something which looks like looks like like lex pair but in principle can be trivial so if you do some change of variables and then actually it turns out that it's not. So people actually um, don't know much about uh, this, like in general. But in discursive context, um, situation is better. And in particular, recently in the work we did with David Calderbank for, for, for second of the dispersionless PDs, we can actually state that it is unique and even can say that it can be computed algorithmically. So it is a sign of integrability in both ways. So if you know equation is integrable, then you can find lux pair just algorithmically, like on computer. But in this more, more, for which class uh, of PDEs, uh, this example of this uh, PDF can be directly generalized? Uh, which example? I'm asking you for which class of PDEs. You, know, you, you gave this as an example, PD, uh, this PDE. That's right. I just got to And the general story is as, well, the, the general answer is it's no general series. There's methods, right? There are books written. And the story is the following. You studied for one equation like for, for KDV. And then you say, okay, there's the next equation which actually came into the play was nonlinear Schrodinger. And 
uh, historically when people saw that all tools applied to nonlinear Schrodinger, that was because KDV maybe it was just a surprise, right? But all tools were applied to NLS, and therefore this was oh actually that's probably a, a, that's probably a method, that's probably a theory. And then there were many more equations, right? But this is a discrete set, right? So you know number of equations and you observe uh, uh, tools applicable in the same. Sometimes you actually may need but but all these equations are okay results are different but they are attacked uh, by the same framework uh, or there is a specific framework for different equations let's say that in dimension two uh, it is the same more or less framework right so so it's like you look for infinite number of isometries uh hamiltonian structure corresponding conservation laws recursion operators that they're the same framework, that's true. Oh. In dimension three already things changes because there's no equations with local higher symmetries. So you get non-locality, you get much more problems. Story with lux pair more or less the same. So, yes. And then there's also a question like, for those equations, like for KDV, the equations are usually evolution. Ut equal to something. You may interpret this as flow in the space of function. Already DKP, if, if, if written, or, or, or KP, if written in local form, then UTTX equal to something, right? It's not UT. And if you would like to write it in the form UT equal to something, then you have to introduce DX minus one, right? And then you have to specify what it means. So it's no longer local game. You have to give some boundary condition, maybe periodic condition, whatever way operator has sense. Right, so it becomes functional now. This is no longer this uh, nice formal game. Thank you. So I, I have a question. Um, so this, <coughs> you said uh, in your uh, answer to Igor that in the dispersive case, people can uh, cook up lax pairs that are fake lax pairs, right? Uh, yes. Case. Right. And then this result that you have with Calder Bank, uh, you're saying that second order, that dispersionless, assuming that the symbol is non-degenerate? That's right. right. That's right. Yes. Yes. And so if, if I start with, let's say, a PDE of fourth order uh, that involves fourth order, third order, second, I mean, any PDE, uh, then is this sort of uh, finding, associating a dispersionless PDE to it? This this is sort of uh, this can be implemented, right? And uh, one ends up with probably the lowest terms uh, in the PDE. That's right. Uh, but 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 look, there's this trick which I showed by Zaharov. It's very much coordinate, right? So which, which maybe it's fine for people from applied mathematics. <coughs> But for geometry, this shall not work, right? Because, well, you say, wh why, why are we using this coordinate? What happens if you change, apply any transformation to jet space? Of course, like your independent can become dependent variable. So, 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 so what's actually the essence of this? So there's no such thing as dispersion limit in a sense, right? But uh, yeah, so, so um, it, it, it ad hoc. So you see it works here, but if you ask me how to formulate it without coordinates, well, that's di re really difficult. Well, of course, if you look to what I did, I actually found there a three-dimensional abelian <laughs> symmetries, and I actually used this, right? So, so there's, there's this scaling was there something from, from something computing with this. I used trans translation variants, and there's also something in the center. So yes, I explored some uh, real algebra structure. Uh, I didn't say about it. So maybe that's the way to say it, actually, right? But but that's not done. So I, I don't know, actually. There's, there's people using this phenomenologically. So they know what is this person living because they, you know how to apply to, to this example and to next example and to third example, right? And since the number of examples is finite, so you're in good shape. I see. And... Uh, uh... And physically, does does it have a like this limit taking a limit? Does it come from some 
physical intuition, some physical understanding, or no, it's comp again computationally uh, implementable in some cases. It's not really physically motivated or. No, no, there's, there's, there are physical things behind, actually, yes. And so you you see actually what's going on. So um, so we have this flow for, let's say, even KP, if, if, if you would like to formulate these things properly, right? And the good thing is that there's also kind of standing waves and the, 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 all solutions will exist like forever. There's good flow. Now, if you go to corresponding dispersionless equations. So what you often see in particular, like for those example, like uh, DKP is this uh, over, overthrown uh, solutions, right? So you have gradient catastrophe. So you have solution of good shape and then top moves faster than bottom, right? And you have something, have something like shock wave. So you have the vertical tensions. So it's no longer, um, a uh, single value solution, but multiple value solution. So evolution actually overthrows things. You can, of course, say, say it's just exists for funny time, but you observe gradient catastrophe. And if you are able to resolve this shock, then you actually can continue after the shock. That's it. <coughs> so, and this is partial effect of what you're doing the scaling clinic. Yes, so, so it kind of zoom very much into, into, into these solutions, yes. Thank you. Yes, I guess all these are uh, very specific equations coming from physics, and all those people are physicists, right? Kadam Tsukpetyashvili. Kadam Tsukpetyashvili definitely physicists, that's right. Even though people who study those are mathematical physicists, which probably doesn't mean physicists, but yes, of course, like Saharov probably have to be considered physicists or mathematicians. So yeah, yeah. Oh, something on the border. You're right. <laughs>